There once was a kid who would sleep on a one inch thick self-inflating three quarter length sleeping pad. He'd stuff his clothes into a stuff sack in order to create a pillow and he'd use a thin blanket in order to try and stay warm at night. That kid was me and that system was how I tried to stay warm and comfortable when I was out backpacking and camping. But no surprise, I was super uncomfortable. Today I'm gonna to share with you my go-to sleep system in order to be comfortable while I'm backpacking and hiking, going through the sleeping pad, insulation, and pillow. I'm a side sleeper, so with the really thin pad, my hip would hurt and then my arm would go numb over the course of the night. And while I did save some weight with the three quarter length pad, my legs would hang off the end and they'd get cold over the course of the night. The go-to pad for my current system addresses the two major flaws with my old system, and that's relieving pressure points and staying warm. For three season use, I recommend getting a sleeping pad with an R-value rating of at least three, but if you live in colder climates or are backpacking in the shoulder seasons quite often, then you probably wanna get something with an R-value rating of at least four. My go-to pad for comfort is the REI Helix. It has an R value of 4.9, which is plenty warm, and I've tested out in shoulder season conditions, and it's kept me warm on really cold ground and in sub-freezing conditions. Where it does kind of fall short is when you're getting onto snow or frozen ground. I've tested dozens and dozens of sleeping pads, and I found that the dimpled baffling pattern that the Helix has, where you have these raised areas and then these dimpled areas, is by far the most effective for relieving pressure points and being comfortable. I can sleep on this pad and I don't get a sore hip and my arms never fall asleep or go numb. This is one of the only pads that I've used along with two other ones, the Sea to Summit Etherlite XT and the Big Agnes Q-Core, where I've slept through the night and slept like a baby. The clothes in a stuff sack pillow really never was super comfortable. Most of the time I'd end up throwing it across the tent in frustration with how uncomfortable it was. There are two main reasons why the stuff sack pillow didn't work out for me. The first one being that it did not provide enough support or height for my head. And then the second one being that it would slide off of the sleeping pad and I'd spend most of the night chasing it around the tent. There are three pillows that are my go-tos and that I find comfortable enough to use out on trail, but we'll use the Xped Mega Pillow as an example. It has all of the features that the other two have as well. First of all, it has a nice height to it in order to support my neck and head. And because it's an inflatable pillow, you inflate it with your breath. It doesn't compress throughout the night like a compressible pillow or a stuff sack full of clothes does. The second thing is that it has supportive baffling. So it feels more like you're laying on a pillow at home instead of a balloon. Like some inflatable pillows out there that you get from other brands, you lay on one side and it kind of decreases down and then the other side balloons up and you never feel super supportive or comfortable on the pillow. Third thing, and probably the most important for me, is that the pillow has a pad strap or an option in order to add a pad strap. So with the X-Ped pillow, you have two loops on either side, and then you can use a piece of shot cord in order to attach the pillow to your strap. The same thing with the other two pillows that are my go-tos. The Nemo Philo also has two loops in order to attach some shot cord, but then the Trekology 2.0 pillow, which is my go-to if I'm going on a lightweight trip, it comes with a pad strap, so it's built right into the pillow. So for me, a pillow has to be tall enough, have supportive baffling, and then a pad strap in order for it to be comfortable. To top it all off, literally, the blank that I was using wasn't warm enough, so I'd spend most of the night shivering and uncomfortable. But there was something about the blanket that was really good, and that's the freedom to toss and turn without feeling restricted like I do with a sleeping bag. And for that reason, a backpacking quilt has become my go-to. Backpacking quilt is just like an upgraded blanket. It has an enclosed foot box, just like a sleeping bag, so it's enclosed usually to about the knees, but then it opens up above the knees just like a blanket does, which allows you to toss and turn and be super comfortable while you're sleeping. But unlike a blanket, a backpacking quilt has pad straps in order to lock it onto the sleeping pad, and then a neck cinch and a snap in order to really close up around your neck and avoid drafts getting in. With a quilt, you get all the freedom of a blanket, but with the upgraded features in order to stay warm. There's three quilts that I recommend as a more budget-friendly option. The Hammock Gear Econo Boro is a great quilt. If you want something a bit more customizable and the ability to get super ultralight, then the Enlightened Equipment Enigma or Revelation quilts are really good. Get the Revelation if it usually only goes down to about 10 degrees or warmer at night. It has an open foot box, so you can open it up and stay really cool if it does get really hot at night. And then get the Enigma if you're camping at temperatures usually below 10 degrees Celsius and definitely below freezing. If you're unsure about quilts and you want to try something out in store or get something that has a really good return policy, then the REI Magma quilt is a great option, but it's only good if you're going down to about freezing and not colder. 
A comfortable sleep system is something I wish I had discovered sooner. If you wanna see a bunch of gear that I wish I discovered sooner as well, then go check out this video right up here. A bunch of gear that helps me be safer and more comfortable out on trail.